In this video, we're going to be validating credit cards using Lund's algorithm, also known as Modulus 10. What we are also going to do is build an application in VB.net uh, 2019 uh, console that will validate the credit card for us. It will tell us whether it's valid or invalid. So this is going to be our test data. We're going to use this fictitious credit card number. If you try to use this credit card number, uh, number nothing is going to happen and there's a series of steps to follow when you're using Lund's algorithm step one is you want to start from right to left and double the number every two digits so one two we double this this becomes a two one two we double the four that becomes an eight one two two becomes four eight nine which would be the second digit again 18. well 18 is not a single digit number if the doubling results in a two digit number Add the two digits together. So one plus eight for this for this number where it would be 18, one plus eight equals nine. Now we add all the remaining untouched digits with the new digits to get the total sum. Now this is where the mod 10 uh, comes in. We divide the total sum by 10. We're gonna use mod and what mod does is simply give us a remainder. If there is no remainder, then the credit card works. It is valid. If there is a remainder, then it does not work and it's considered invalid. So what we're going to be doing is in VB.net, we're gonna be using mod and uh, running this algorithm to validate credit cards. So let's switch over to our application right now. Now that we've switched over to our programming screen, we can actually write an algorithm to test um, a credit card and see if it's valid or invalid. We have our test data right here. The first thing we're gonna need are some variables. And the first one we're gonna do is credit card, and that's gonna be a uh, data type string. Uh, we can't make it an integer because with 16 digits, it's gonna say the number is too large and it, will, it can't be held. By doing it as a string, we can isolate each individual character and we'll We'll need to convert some things to an integer so we'll do that in this program we also need to isolate each digit and there are 16 digits in the credit card and we're going to do that as an integer because we need to add them all uh, together speaking of adding we're also going to need double digit and that's going to be a string now the reason it's a string is because if i have like when we're doubling nine it becomes 18. I can't isolate an integer, the first character of an integer, and then the second uh, character of an integer. By having it as a string, we can isolate each character, and then we can convert it uh, to a number. And then what we need is we need the credit card uh, sum, and what that is going to do is hold the total because we need to add all these numbers together, and then we need to use uh, mod 10, which means take the sum, divide it by 10, and um, get the remainder. That's the only thing we're interested in because remember if there's a remainder It's invalid if there is no remainder it is valid Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the credit card number So please enter the credit card number and then we're going to store that in a credit card because uh, well that just makes sense I don't really know where else you would store it. We are going to go ahead and output the credit card as well. And the reason for that is, is so we can see if, uh, if it doesn't work, that maybe it's possible we mistyped something, typing in 16 uh, numbers in a row, it can get very easy to uh, mistype something. What we need to do now is we need to take a look at our direction. So we have our test data. And what we wanna do is start from right to left and we want to double the number every two digits. So, and then um, this part, if the doubling results in a two digit number, add the two digits together. So we're going to do that first. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to work from right to left. Uh, so we're going to use an I loop. Now remember, or a for next loop uh, using I as to get the uh, digit uh, or the character that we want. It's a for next loop, not an I loop. There are no such thing as I loops. So what we're going to do is we need to work from right to left. So we're not gonna start at one. We're gonna start at 15 and we're gonna go all the way down to one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go every two digits. So that's what the step negative two is. I is gonna start at 15. When it runs through the loop the second time or the second iteration, it's gonna step down by negative two. 
15, step negative 2 means 15 minus 2. Now it's going to go to 13. And you might be saying, well, why in the world do we even need that? Well, the reason for that is we need to get digit 15, digit 13, 11, 9, 7, 5, 3, and 1. Because what we're doing is we're getting those digits and checking to see if it needs to be doubled. So right here, start from right to left, double the number every two digits. And we're starting from right to left, not left to right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do digit I. And because I need to store all these digits. Now I'm going to use my mid, my string manipulation, and I'm working with the string credit card. I'm going to start at position I, and I want one of those characters. That is what I'm going to do. Now I need to double that digit. So no problem. Digit I is going to be equal to digit I times 2. Now, here's what I need to do. If it is... um results in a double digit, then what I need to do is I need to add those two digits together. So I need to check for that. So what we're going to use is a simple if statement. So if the digit that we are currently working with, which is digit I, is greater than 9, then, and inside here, I'm going to have all my stuff work together. So the first thing I need to do is get that first double digit digit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do double digit one. And what I'm going to set that to is mid digit I. And then I'm going to put a comma. And what am I trying to get? I'm trying to get character one. How many of those characters do I want to record? One. Then I need to do the same thing for digit number two. I'm going to use my mid. I'm grabbing digit I. I'm grabbing, starting from the second character, grabbing one digit. So that will allow me to isolate those two digits. What I need to do now is I need to add them together. So digit I equals, because we're up, we're still working with that same digit, we're going to use convert to INT 32. Now, when we do INT32, it wants to know, okay, what are we converting to INT32? Well, that's going to be double digit 1. And then what we need to do is we need to add double digit 2. What this will allow us to do is to take um, double digit 1 and double digit 2. I forgot to put my parentheses for the array. It will convert this right here, double digit one and two, because we said it's a string. And what that is going to do is it's going to convert it to an integer. So when it adds it together, it's not going to add it, When it adds one plus eight, it comes out as nine, not literally a one plus eight. It would still come out as a 18. And we're using a Lund's algorithm. Now that's uh, it for that. So what we need to do now is we need to check our steps. Um, we need to add all the remaining untouched digits with the new digits to get the total sum. So here what we need to do is we simply need to start adding these together. So credit card sum equals credit card sum plus digit I. So that will give us a... Uh, that will give us the sum and we'll add that to the remaining because if I look at step uh, 2, it says add all the remaining untouched digits with the new digits to get the total sum. So what we're going to use is we're going to use another for loop. And this one is going to be a lot shorter because we don't need to double anything. We're just simply taking the numbers. So we're going to do for i equals 2 and we're going to go all the way to 16. And we're going to step by two. And that way we don't get the uh, every uh, digit that's supposed to be doubled. And you might be saying, well, hold on now. We did that for the other one. No, we started from right to left. This one we can go right to left or left to right. It doesn't matter as long as we're stepping correctly. So if I uh, look at step two, I can go one, two. This four doesn't need to be doubled. One, two. This seven doesn't need to be doubled. One, two. This two doesn't need to be doubled. One, two. This eight does not need to be doubled. One, two. This eight doesn't need to be doubled. One, two. This three. 
one, two. This one doesn't need to be doubled, one, two. This three doesn't need to be doubled. So what we're doing is we're collecting every number that doesn't need to be doubled. So for this, we're gonna use digit i because we're only getting the digits that don't need to be doubled inside this for loop. And we're gonna use mid again. What string are we working with? We're working with credit card. We're starting at position i, we're taking one character. And what that is gonna do is gonna, it's gonna take that character, store it in digit i. All we need to do now is update our credit card sum. And our credit card sum uh, equals credit card sum plus digit i. Now with those two for loops, what we have done is we've taken every digit, we doubled the digits up here if we needed to, down here we got the digits that didn't need to be doubled. Now what we need to do is simply follow this. Add all the remaining untouched digits with the new digits, which we did right here. And then what, all we need to do now is divide the total sum by 10. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, mod, which is simply going to take it and see if it has a remainder or not. So we're gonna do if credit card sum mod 10 uh, equals zero, then, meaning there's no remainder, we're gonna output the credit card is valid. And then if it's not zero, then what we're going to do is we're gonna tell them the credit card is not valid. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using this as our test data. So let's go ahead and save our program, let's run it, and let's see if it works. Here is our program. What we're gonna do is we're gonna enter our test data, which was 54576238, and then 4113. So that's our credit card. We're not gonna put in the dashes uh, because the dashes you can't do uh, math with them. So what we're gonna do is, we should see a uh, message letting, letting us know if this is valid or invalid. It says the credit card is valid, which indeed this fictitious credit card is. If I go back and I change it, so we'll do say five, four, five, nine, uh, six, one, two, three, uh, nine, eight, one, one, and I'm punching in random numbers here. Um, we see the credit card is not valid. It runs through it and we see that that uh, is a fictitious credit card, but it doesn't matter because it's not valid anyway. That's how you use Lun's algorithm. That is also how you program Lun's algorithm to work. If you have any questions, please post a comment below. We'll see you guys in the next video.